Hi everyone, my name is Amyukta Nirja. My name is April Tone, and you are listening to Humans of Authenticity. Our guest today is V. Lee. Welcome to Humans of Authenticity. Hey, we're so excited to bring you this finale of season one of Humans of Authenticity with V. Lee and April and I are really excited to be your co-hosts for this episode. We are doing a role reversal here to have some fun today with our guest and we'll be hearing all about her, her story and her key word, which is rebellion. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to V. Lee. Thank you so much for jumping on this idea with me and I really appreciate the opportunities to have these conversations with my listeners. Thank you. Of course. So why did you decide to go with rebellion as the key word for your episode? Well, we get right into the nuts. So in the last couple of weeks, I had an opportunity to speak to this author, Amy Yip, and she shared with me her stories, being an Asian American's daughter of an immigrant family, there are certain expectations of education and careers to the point that there is no flexibility to choose the career path that makes her happy. Mm. And that reminds me a lot of my relationship with my parents. As in, I always listen to the advice and what they say. It doesn't mean that I have followed the advice along the way. It doesn't mean that I disrespected them, but sometimes I feel that Because I live in a foreign country for so long, I feel that the values start misaligning and that there are things that I've done that doesn't follow the advice or expectations. And I see in that a little bit of rebellious in a way that it brought me out of the expectations and give me that joy and the freedom. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Absolutely, it does. And it sounds like uh, your, your theme of this phase in your life, right? When you're talking about rebellion and what that means, and you're kind of taking a strategic approach to your key term with rebellion. Have you heard it anywhere else as you've done this season? I know you've interviewed a great amount of people. Was there a common theme with rebellion that could tap into what you're seeing in this phase in your life with your interviews? I love that question. I've done up to this point about 60 interviews. Every time my guests turning up to these conversations, a few things in March. First of all, they continuously reject failure. Like in your conversation, April, we talk a lot about that. What does failure look like? And at the end of the day, if we don't learn anything from our experience, that's really a failure. Otherwise, everything has meanings and success behind that and for me that in itself is the sense of rebellions i had another conversations with erica ochoa about purpose and the sense of one day we wake up we realize that this is something that we want to do and that's our calling our purpose i had another conversations recently with zeri hans and we talk about suitable purpose with Zeri Han, it is about quantifying that purpose so that we can work, work back to where we are today and where we're going to get to with our purpose. And for me, that's another sense of rebellion to say no to all of the distractions. This is my path and I'll go with my path. No, that's great. Yeah. And I was actually just thinking about my episode to the first one with you when we were talking about bravery. Society expects you to be certain ways to fit a mold that they create in their minds, right? But by breaking that mold, by going against the grain, could that be rebellion? Because whenever someone says rebellion, I rebel, they tend to put like a negative spin on it. I feel that rebellion could also mean just speaking out, not conforming to what people think that you should be doing. That's really true. And that's something that I'm still trying to work on, speaking out um, and speaking up in a scenario or in an environment where I think that it is safe enough for me to raise my voice. I'll definitely share the stories like what we are doing right now. We know each other. We have that emotional connections whenever we see each other. So I feel it's easier for me to share my thoughts and my voice. But when I'm in a very artificial environment, I find it's hard for me to speak up because 
a lot of that assumptions that, oh, well, they are not going to listen to me. They are not going to appreciate what I'm saying. I still try to work on that part of advocating for myself in a sense. But yes, definitely the rebellious thinking is still there. I journal it down so that I get all of the, the thoughts out of my head, but it's still lingering there. So as we're doing the season finale, have you had a chance to reflect on the season, the journey throughout the season and any highlights or any episodes, any interviewees that stood out to you or surprised you the most? So there are 60 episodes that I've done and I don't... That's a lot. (laughs) I guess a couple of things. First of all, I want to acknowledge the self-awareness piece. Like all of my guests, they are so certain of their values. In the way that they retell their stories, their value come out consistently. And I really appreciate that because as soon as we say something not real, the patterns will emerge. I appreciate my guests from the start to the end of the conversations, their value come out very clearly. So that's the self-awareness piece. The second piece, like you you mentioned earlier, Sam, you said the bravery piece. I mean, it's important to be aware of our value, but it doesn't mean that we know how to advocate for our own value and our positions, and we are brave enough to advocate for our positions. And that's what I'm struggling with, how I can move from aware, but afraid to aware and be brave and show up in that core value and positions. My guests consistently tell me how to do that. They consistently share with me their defining moments so that they can feel comfortable in showing up with their core value. And that's why I, every interview, so looking forward to hearing their stories and hearing how they define themselves, how they consistently say no to challenges and how they expand their boundaries so that they can grow. And throughout the last 60 interviews, I learned so much from those wisdom and from those conversations. That's great. It's interesting that you say that they were all so self-aware. And one of the conversations that we always have is being self-aware, but also a work in progress, right? And so it's okay to still be that work in progress, but still know who you are. And as you're working towards that, like you were talking about, there's some areas that you had heard in the interview where you yourself got inspiration from talking to the individuals in the episode. It made it so that you were inspired in your efforts and your journey. And so those lessons and insights that emerged throughout the season has been a catalyst for you. Would you say that your perspective has changed as far as how you're doing things, what you're doing, when, where, and why? Definitely changed my perspective. Go back to that self-awareness piece. I mean, we read books, we watch documentary, we listen to interview, all of these knowledge being absorbed into our brain. It doesn't mean that we are able to express and demonstrate those knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people say the perfectly right thing, but not until we observe their behavior in the real scenario, then we know that, aha, they say the right thing doesn't mean that they do the right thing. There are seven steps from the day that we obtain the knowledge until that the day that we can demonstrate the knowledge. And I think I am somewhere in the middle, but as in terms of work in progress, the more conversations I have with my guests, the more tools, the more confidence, the more pathway I have equipped me to move towards demonstrations of the new knowledge that I obtain. Wow. So it, it has been definitely a beautiful journey for you. It sounds just all the lessons that your guests have shared, that they've learned and like what you've taken from them. And I just remember when we first met at the Delphi reunion last year, you were talking about, I'm putting together this podcast. I am going to do this. And, and I want the audience to hear, how did you decide to do this? Why did you come up with this idea? What were you thinking? Okay, it was such a beautiful memories for those who are not familiar with the Delft reunion. Basically, the three of us, and Yuka, April, and me, were part of the diversity 
Executive Leadership Program provided by ASIA. And as part of being a member of that program, we have this privilege to attend a reunion, not only amongst our cohort, but also with the alumni of the program so that we can be part of a support community. And shout out to Visit Detroit for supporting this program. During the last reunion, which was my very first experience, I stepped into this community of so exciting, welcoming people. Shout out to Ali Brown and Rodney Cascott. I had this very heart-to-heart -heart conversation with these two individuals about their life journey, their stories. And at that point, I wish that I could write all of those lessons down. I wish that I could share all of those lessons to my peers because there are a lot about bravery, how to show up, how to advocate for yourself, how do you protect your own positions in those stories. At some point, I thought I would write a blog about it, but then I know that the true voice of these characters will not be reflected enough in my writing. So then I thought, you know, a podcast conversation would be a great method to record all of these conversations. And that's how it started the idea of the podcast conversation. Then at the ASA annual meeting last year, I attend the keynotes from Chad Foster and Damon John. In other sessions, at the end of the day, the theme of the lesson that I've learned from this conversation is how we show up in our truest sense. And for me, that's authenticity. Now, at the same time, I also know that there are a lot of buzzwords about authentic the term authenticity itself. People say that it's not clearly defined. It's different for different individuals. So on the quest to find my own definitions of authenticity, I thought, why not inviting all of these people to join me on these conversations to share with me what authenticity look like from their own version and what an amazing learning journey would that be? So that's the foundation of this podcast program. Yeah. And when you pitched the idea, it was like immediate yes. I right? Mean, there was <laughs> no question. It was like, when do we start? Are we doing it here? Are we doing it right now at the review? <laughs> no. So it's such a powerful space. Like just the way that you created the space for everyone, that you curated this opportunity for everyone to be able to be vulnerable and to be able to be like safe. Like I felt safe talking to you, you know, and I, I, I was surprised with all of the things that I was able to talk about and bring to the table in the conversation. And just the way you were so open and the way you helped me unpack some of those things it was a very special moment thank you I think credit goes back to you guys that self-awareness piece so we talk about we know what our value is and we know how we show up with our values so it just go back to that very core of the conversations because again as soon as we fabricate any of those ideologies the truth will come out and, and I like that the different individuals you got, you got some people from Delp, some people not from Delp, and it gave a space. A lot of people have podcasts and I think that they're great. I'm not a huge podcaster, but I listen to yours. It's just something about how it's put together, the questions and really the word, the word that everyone selects gives us themes of the week, so to speak. I take them as things for me to focus on for that week. I mean, whether it's rebellion or bravery or failure, you know, it's always something to be looked at and to be twisted into a positive outlook. And so in doing that, you engage your audience, you set this platform, you say, okay, we're going to do it. Your cheer squad is, is there. I mean, like anybody, anybody who knows a Delper knows that it's an automatic cheer squad. <laughs> Like, so, hello. <laughs> we are so ready at any given time. So you've got that going. How do you determine what's successful in the program? Is it the the numbers? Is it a big community? Is it that we have the podcast? What have you deemed or what do you call a successful podcast? Meaning how do you determine if it's successful or not? Well, numbers is great. Just give us data. 
it gives us the reactions from the market. Having said that, my focus never been on the numbers. My focus is if I can have a genuine conversation with this person in front of me, if I can find that emotional connections during that conversations, if I can freely talk about emotion during their conversations, if I can unpack that moment that happened to them in that stories, for me, that is a successful conversations. And if I can publish an episode at 10 a.m. on every Sunday, to me, is that success. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I'm grateful that I've been able to do that since October. And then whatever come up afterwards is no longer in my control. So I just have to live with that. I am so grateful that I've always had the cheering and the feedback from peers each time I come across someone who have touched on the material. I'm grateful that I receive very positive feedback. And I mean, my boss in Australia, they watch some of the episode and they always send me feedback, say how good they are. And I feel that as a success at the end of the day, it's not a number game. It is a story sharing game. Yeah. And, and is, isn't that what we do with our organizations? Some metrics are based on numbers. Some are based on exposure, right? And so even with what we do in organizations is not always going to be high numbers, especially when a product is first getting started, but it's like, okay, so what was the draw? What did people get out of this? Someone talking about these topics that they probably wouldn't have talked about anywhere else. I kind of feel like it's a virtual um, therapy room. Like I kind of felt like I was in on a virtual couch with V. I know. <laughs> I know. I was just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> v, v give, okay, V, we're going to give you your roses while you can smell them a little bit. So right? be prepared. I know she hates this, y'all. Like it's center of attention. It's all you. You agree to it. So it's happening. You get that vibe anyway from V, right? Every time you see her, like, oh, hi. Like it's just pleasant. <laughs> v is just very pleasant. And whatever you were upset about, it's gone. Like it's just, it's gone. <laughs> That is so cool. I think that it's like superpowers, whisperer, like the, the call is whisperer. I don't know, but it made it so that it was so easy to talk to, which is great. And again, you can always go back to the topics. And that's something I've done just as a listener, you know, depending on where I am in my personal or professional journey, I'll go listen to one of those key words. Like I'll look on the the podcast listening to see, okay, what am I dealing with? Is it anxiety? Is it this? Is it that? And go listen to it as, like you said, inspiration for whatever I'm dealing with and sometimes guidance. So yeah, it can't always be a numbers game, but you still have so many things that have made an impact and all the comments that I've seen and the stories that have come from those comments of things that were posted has made a world of difference. It's interesting. Our credit to Dell. Way before being part of Dell, I would never thought that I'll be able to pull this together. Wow. I felt that at the time, even having a genuine conversation with someone is something just so challenging for myself. This is still happening right now if I'm in a room full of people. So typical networking situation as ASAE programs, right? I always one of those people that stand against the wall as close as possible and did not want to draw any attention. At the same time, scanning the room to see familiar faces and peers and people that I can just say hi to. But I don't know what happened to me or what transformed me through Dell. You guys probably sense that. I'm now more comfortable sharing my thoughts, expressing my opinions, and having these conversations. At the end of the day, it was just me listening to other stories. But I feel like I start sharing my thoughts during those conversations a lot more. Like you say, it is that safe space, not only for my guests, but also for myself to speak my mind. So credit to Del. I don't know what it does to me, but it did what <laughs> It's the level up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Transformative. That's what it is. It is 
That's it. Something I'm telling you, it like you feel seen. I totally with you be when you mentioned standing in a corner, just waiting until you see someone and then you go up to them. It has also just really broken my shell. I'm always still thinking like, oh, what are people judging? What are their preconceived opinions about me? What are they thinking? And, you know, the height difference and just like networking. I, you all know this. Networking is such a daunting thing for me. But then with Delph, I was even a little bit nervous about this last reunion last month. And I was like, okay, are people going to come up to me? What are they going to do? Am I just so many people? But then it was a family reunion basically. People were hugging you like, hey, how are you? How have you been? You didn't have to try. You don't have to try. It just happened. It just, yeah. (laughs) And then what it's all about, you mentioned if you feel seen and, you know, organizations are prioritizing, what are we doing to make our members or our stakeholders feel seen? And I feel like V's platform with this is the opportunity for us as association executives to feel seen in that space. Mm -hmm. You get so many different people. You also get the opportunity to share the association executive or the ASAE platform with people who don't know what associations are. Because what I do is I share these videos on my personal social media, because that's another thing. I don't even think you realize this, but you're literally sharing the career space with people. And I mean, talk about mission-driven work, that's it to its core. Whereas it may, it may have started off as one thing, but it has evolved into so much more. Agreed. Like you, this is an association podcast. I see when people say, oh, if you want to listen to association podcasts, they have a list and you're there. Your podcast is there. And we talk about aligning values and a lot authentic based leadership. And you, your podcast talks about aligning your core values like what are your morals what are your values what are the things that are important to you and how can that show up in your association career in the organization so I think that the your podcast has really brought light to that and really allowed us to go inward and embrace ourselves for who we are thank you for that I appreciate the feedback it's interesting about the going inward pace and introspective There are guests coming back to me after the conversations and just say how insightful those questions are and some of the questions even lingering in their thoughts. Sometimes they want to reduce certain part of the conversations, respond again to certain part of the conversation. And I felt that it is, like you say, one of the unintended consequences of the interview. It helped my guests to go back to that very core values and unpack and see what that really means for them. And I think that's absolutely important in this day and age where there are just so much distractions. The simplest thing to do is just go back to our core values and slowly see how we show up and protect those core values. Going on that, have you had thoughts about what the next season is going to look like? What what you thinking? Hopefully that I can pull this off. I have idea for the following two seasons. Now, first of all, I'm in the stage of my career when I'm thinking about my next step. And, you know, the only way to go is go up, right? So I'm trying to envisioning what does up means for me. What should I do with my core values when I'm moving up? How do I protect my core value as I'm moving up? These are big questions for myself. So I invite people to join me for the next season to talk about that. How to protect yourself when you're moving up. My second season, which is in production right now, releasing in October this year, I'm inviting CEO in the association space to join me on conversations about their core value and how they align their core value with the organization that they work with and with the community that they serve. These are extremely inspirational for me. I could see that we could do great things just being ourselves. I had these conversations with Sean Boyne yesterday and he said how he were able to be himself in these organizations and how he could success just being himself. That's self-awareness, right? We need to know who we are and then we need to 
align who we are with the organization that we serve. I've learned so much from those conversations and I hope that those conversations will add values to the rest of the listeners. So that's the second season. The third season, which proved more challenging than I thought it would have been. Now, I'm a Vietnamese Australian. I know that I share a lot of the Australian flavors in my conversations and vocabularies and the way that I show up. I don't think that I have tribute enough to my Vietnamese roots. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I just invite overseas Vietnamese to join me in these conversations and talk about how being a Vietnamese help us to thrive in the international settings. That sounds great, right? Oh, but it's not, but amazing. But it's not easy Love to it. pull off. It's not yeah. easy to pull off because we were taught to keep our head down, do the work, and let the rest of the achievement and the results speak for us. And what that means is I feel that we are not comfortable talking about our own stories. Way before these conversations, I had therapy sessions with Samyutha and Justin Rias of how difficult it is for me to talk about my own stories. We were not taught to be at the center of the attention. In today's workplace, probably not do us any favor if we want to learn how to advocate for ourselves. So finger crossed, hopefully I can invite enough guests to join me but wouldn't it amazing to spot the headline to all the overseas Vietnamese so that we can create a path for other overseas Vietnamese to feel comfortable to show up as who we are no longer have to code switching no longer have to fake it until we make it absolutely and- that's that's amazing I don't know if you saw <laughs> Sam Youth and my faces just light up when it's <laughs> daunting of a task. Yes, but you wouldn't be V if you didn't find something extraordinary to do. I mean, first of all, let's go back to season two in regards to the core values, how to maintain your core values while elevating yourself. It's the maintenance mm. and the elevation. Snaps for that. I mean, wow, that's. I look forward to it. Yeah. 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 What a tribute. Just like your podcasts are tributes yeah. <laughs> to thank you. The the culture, the society, the individual, the values. Yeah. You'll do it. And it you're, it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. And you know, cheer squad. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> right behind you. Can't help but do it. It's just so refreshing. So here, I love creative people. And I think, I know you're one of those people because just this concept alone just reeks of creativity. And then the themes of each season is really great. Whether it's a part of your journey or not, as a listener, it's still so rich because everyone knows somebody who's doing just that. Like trying to go up without losing yourself. In my family, we always say, never forget where you came from. That's one of those things. Don't forget where you came from. And with that, we are so excited about what's next. We know that you're going to conquer it. And if you ever get in a bind, you know who to call. Which is so amazing about hearing that you've gone from person standing in the back kind of looking for someone you can meet or a familiar face to I'm kind of changing the world right now just subtly I'm trying it's just like oh I have these ideas you know no it's like no big deal but we're like yes it is and that being said what are your final thoughts what do you want to leave us with as we anxiously and patiently await next season what do you want to leave for us while we wait on that moment? That is a big question. I was in New Jersey last weekend, and then I went to visit Thomas Edison's estate. I saw the tomb of Thomas Edison and his wife on the ground. And all of a sudden, this idea of we've done so much during our time on Earth, and here we are after we left Earth. This is what we left physically on this space. 
for some reason, that thinking lingering with me over the last weeks or so. And we start talking about the legacy, what we want to leave on earth. It is a big question that I'm still trying to find out. I don't know, and I couldn't imagine what the outcomes of the programs for our listeners. I do hope that because these are very genuine conversations, they will be received as such. I've got feedback from listeners saying that, oh, I know this person from work. I've seen their profile so many times. I come across them because they are director of such and such, but I've never known their personal story. And at the end of the day, that's what I hope to share with the rest of the world. The person behind the title, the person behind the organization, the person behind big media campaign, success stories. And go back to what you mentioned earlier, once we get to that personal space, then we can start finding similarity and we start seeing the path for us based on those similarity and I think that's why representation is important once we see someone that looks like us able to achieve that isn't that inspiring oh yeah and we are in such a hopeful moment of history isn't that inspiring if someone that looks like us can step into that position yeah wow again with this oh my gosh you have been so insightful and I know being on the other side of this virtual video (laughs) is so different (laughs) and we thank you for playing along with us as we wrap up the end of this episode thank you again for sharing your story with us and your listeners we're just so grateful this was fun this was fun. Like April said, thank you for having us be a part of this conversation and for you in providing this platform for authentic individuals to share their voice and share their story. Yep. And to all the listeners out there, stay tuned in the fall. It's going to be a doozy. We'll see you next time. <laughs> thank you so much for entertaining my idea. I really appreciate it. Love it. My name is Vili and you are listening to Human Soft Authenticity. Until next time. Thank you.